Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Tuesday, April 11th, 2017 edition of VR News. Don't think for one second I am not appreciative of the statistic. I absolutely am breaking 4,000 subscribers. I think 4,020 plus as of me recording this. Guys, I am super appreciative of that. It's not something I obsess about, but still appreciate very much. Said it before. I think the last time was last night. Not going to keep harping on it, but you guys, easily the best viewers, easily the best comment section on virtual reality on YouTube, bar none. All right. The other thing I wanted to just say quickly is uh, due to the four-hour time zone difference out here in Atlantic Canada and just a very hectic, busy initial schedule, I've been uncharacteristically lax on reading and responding to comments. So if you've got a comment with a burning question you've been waiting to ask me and need an answer, maybe it's time sensitive on purchasing something, whatever, know that I will get to it in a couple of days. The schedule will freeze up for the last three days of the trip. I'm going to do my best to catch up on those comments and respond. With that said, guys, let's dive into news and start with the Gear VR. Now, Samsung and others have thrown that 5 million plus v uh, Gear VR units out there number around a lot. We look at statistics, they lead the pack. Yes, it's mobile VR, but it's still a pretty impressive number. But let's not kid ourselves in thinking that that 5 plus million in any way represents active users. Not the case. Probably not even close. Uh, I'd be willing to bet a lot of those 5 million plus are gathering dust, just like the majority of cardio equipment in people's homes. That's just the reality. It's a free thing, but if somebody gets that free thing and doesn't really have an interest in it, it's going to get tossed to the wayside. Now, it's still an impressive number, 5 million, and it's only likely to increase. With the latest promotion, which kind of mirrors Samsung's previous Galaxy S7 promotion that saw you get a Gear VR for free. This time around, if you pre-order Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus before April 20th, that's kind of the magic date, it's about a week and a half away from now, and you claim your prize by the relevant day in May, then yes, you can have a Gear VR as well. So make sure if you're an Android fan, uh, phone person and you were considering Samsung that you're aware of this, and you can get that for free as a promotion thrown in. Now, next up, CEO of Pokemon Go company, Niantic, he fears a Ready Player One VR scenario. But let's rewind a second and put this into some perspective. So let's take that with a big ass grain of salt because John Hank, who is the CEO in question, he has gone on record several times as not really being a supporter of VR. He's thrown in, as has his company, with augmented reality. Now, I've said time and time again, I think the two are completely different, and one does not impact the other, but you've still got to take his words at some value, that VR is not a focus of theirs. So when he comes out and says that he's worried about virtual reality creating, you know, a, a humanity that is addicted to virtual reality that won't leave their homes and join the outside world, guys, we've heard this before. Are there addictive personalities out there? Yes. Are some individuals likely to be completely addicted to VR and never leave their home and become the global equivalent of the hikokomori? like, you know, Japan's shut-ins, yes. But that will not even be close to most of the people, all of the people. It'll just be a small subset of the people. I've heard this before. I heard it when arcade games were in the golden age. I've heard it when video games. It's been around forever. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, television. You know, if you've got baby boomer parents or grandparents... They will tell you the same thing. At the dawn of television, it was going to ruin humanity. Even radio and theaters, same thing. 
It's never happened. It won't happen. Is it going to be fun as hell? Am I going to be in there taking as much advantage of modern VR in 15 to 20 years? Hell yeah. But society won't grind to a halt, guys. Not even close. Next up, we talk about uh, the Project Cars developer, Slightly Mad Studios. Now, Project Cars is probably, of the three, would I put it near the top? Between Dirt Rally, that, and Aceto. You know what? Depends on my mood. I'm not even going to place them. Let's just say that all three are really good virtual reality racing games, depending on what you're looking for. They each deliver different experiences. If you're into rally racing, Dirt Rally is amazing. So I like all three. PlayStation VR users or gamers rather, have not been able to take advantage of Project Cars. So the question was asked of the uh, creative director, Andy Tudor, would Project Cars 2 be supported on PlayStation VR? His answer was interesting because it looks like while they're looking into it, it may come to pass that again, it's not supported. The main reason for that was technology. He said what they're looking into is seeing if the shortcuts that they have to take to make it viable on PlayStation VR impact what to them creatively, artistically, performance-wise, even just at a technical level, you know, makes the game not what they had originally envisioned. They're not going to do it. So we're probably not at that stage yet. You've also got PlayStation 4 Pro considerations. The user base is still not as big, you know, to make that a clear-cut argument. So uh, I would hope they do just to establish some goodwill. But if it costs a lot development-wise, they're likely to not do that. However, he did confirm that Vive and Rift users will get another virtual reality version of the game with part two. So if you haven't played that, by the way, and you like racing sims, all three that I mentioned are fantastic in their own way. Definitely look for those. If they are on sale, add them to your VR collection. Those with a good racing wheel, guys, you cannot beat that as a virtual reality experience. Just fantastic. Next story, the trial that I had hoped to not talk about again for a while, and it has been a while, well, it's in the news again. This time, Oculus officially motioning for a new trial with their filing made just a couple of days ago. This, of course, the $500 million Zenimax for Zenimax verdict that was issued out a couple of months ago. So Oculus uh, last Friday filed the motion for a new trial and wording used frequently in their filing, which is viewable as a PDF if you're interested in reading the legalese, I'll kind of sum it up for you, basically made frequent references to the following, that the verdict was against the great weight of the evidence and that spoilation testimony and adverse interference instruction tainted the jury. They also uh, labeled the damages awarded as excessive and the jury's verdict as irreconcilably inconsistent. So, whichever side you're on, maybe like me, you're just on the sidelines looking in. Doesn't look like it's quite over yet, uh, unless, of course, this gets tossed out. Strangely, I don't think it will, and it's probably going to drag on a little bit, but... At least Oculus is, as they said they would, moving forward with VR initiatives. It's not grinding things to a halt for them. Next story, Unity expanding to deliver virtual reality in areas beyond gaming. And this is something we do talk about quite a bit here on the news. We've had that back and forth even in the comment section and several news stories showing exciting, interesting areas. Just yesterday, another uh, popped up where virtual reality can benefit and find a market. We've talked about healthcare and the music industry. I did catch a couple of comments, rather it was my wife reading them to me, 
about uh, someone commenting that they couldn't wait to see the tilt brush equivalent for artists in VR, but for musicians in VR. So yeah, yeah, very, very cool. And I would agree with that statement. When that app does come, it's going to be pretty damn special. Agreed. So what Unity is, is hoping to do is look into areas like those that I just mentioned that fall outside of gaming, not just for their engine, but where they could benefit. So very cool. And it will make Unity or help contribute into making Unity that much more inval invaluable as a tool for developers. If they're not just gaming centric, but you know, become important just for VR in general because it is a multimedia offering. It offers things that a, a company that is primarily done game programming can get behind. So absolutely a lucrative possibility for Unity. And we're probably going to see, my bet would be, Unreal Engine follow suit and similarly offer for programming things outside of the traditional gaming market. Now, this next company, very interesting because it is part of my kind of portfolio of things that I do as an IT manager in a company, and that is reporting. So a lot of the reporting that I do, and this sets up the story, is SQL server based. So my company has an ERP, which is enterprise resource planning software that utilizes a SQL database backbone. So basically what an ERP is, just think of all the stuff a company does around kind of an accounting general ledger. So a company creates sales orders for customers, they purchase and create purchase orders to purchase things from vendors that they then sell to customers. They manage inventory in a warehouse generally, and you know, we'll do all kinds of other fixed assets, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Fine, done. What they then want to be able to do is create reports based on that. And ERPs will generally have canned reports, but my experience is most of them are next to useless. So what IT professionals usually find themselves doing is creating additional reports. And often that starts out as Excel pivots, right? Pivots in Microsoft Excel. And a pivot is just a way of grouping numbers that you can then drill into. So you could look at sales for a customer and then get into the details of what the products are, what the regions are, etc. That's where this company comes in and why this is so interesting to me and possibly others out there that also deal with reporting. A lot of the reporting outcome when I work with Power BI and other tools to get that data, it's flat. Yeah, you can have 3D charts and bar graphs and scatter diagrams, but at the end of the day, it's still a 2D static way of looking at the data. So Virtualytics, They've come in and they've just raised another 4.4 million. They are going to allow people to look at that same type of data, but through a virtual reality HMD, which is going to just completely, in my opinion, revolutionize the way companies look at data. Many humans are really great at visualizing and how data is represented is super important. And it's not just important in getting a message across. You can sell stuff based on how you structure data. And where you'll typically see this is with bar graphs. Percentage bar graphs can be made to pretty much make anything look good or make anything look bad, depending on the scale that they use, right? So you could have a bunch of bars using a specific scale that makes something look really, really good or really, really bad. And that happens all the time. This may be a way to get around that because suddenly in VR, in 3D, you're able to manipulate the data in all those extra dimensions, walk around it, visualize it differently. You might look at a geographical map and look at volume of sales, for example, and have each region have like a height map that you could walk around and 
just analyze that data in a way you've never been able to before. Now, for those of you who don't work with that stuff, it could be boring as freaking hell. And I completely agree with that. For those of us who do, however, the potential is absolutely staggering. And I'm really excited about these guys. Going to follow them closely because it's going to be companies like this that open up just yet another avenue in VR. We talk about health and all those other things. This is another one, reporting data. So very cool. We'll leave it at that. If you're interested in more guys, it gets a lot more technical than my little summary. Check out the link in the description below. Next news story, Litro's latest VR light field camera is huge and hugely improved. This according to Road to VR. Now, showed this on a news piece before. This Litro camera that they're using is just, or Litro, Litro, it is absolutely massive. And the new prototype that they've built, which has come kind of, you know, due to new funding, they've got $60 million in additional funding, just absolutely amazing. And where we looked at the older prototype was with that famous moonshot. And what their technology is designed to do is not just 360, but take a picture of something like that moon landing set that they did, but then also kind of pan around the objects a little bit so that you can step into the picture or step to the side, you know, left, right, move forward a little bit, and everything will react accordingly and in scale. So not like walking through, through a true 3D environment, but taking a 2D picture and then making it appear as if it was 3D with some limited movement in it. It's got all kinds of potential. Of course, the thing is massive and it looks to modern microcomputers like a mainframe does to modern, or sorry, it looks to 360 degree cameras, what a mainframe does to PCs, right? Back when PCs literally took up an entire floor of an office building. And it was only until the 70s that they started getting to the point where, yeah, you could actually put one on your desk. So, be interesting. Don't really understand what type of applications. I can see some, but to really provide a return on investment, well, they're going to have to show us what their product is capable of. And they can have all the funding in the world for that, but unless there's a viable business model somewhere there, at some point, they're gonna have to generate their own revenue. Uh, the handouts will stop coming in. All right, guys, that is it for the news for tonight, for Tuesday. Uh, like I said, in a couple of days, things will quiet down a bit. I will catch up on the comments. Guys, hoping you're having a good week. As always, cheers.